Hello, everyone. This is the CircuitPython Weekly for Monday, August 7th, 2023. This is the time of the week when we get together to talk about all things CircuitPython. I'm Dan, and I'm sponsored by Adafruit to work on CircuitPython. You might ask, what is CircuitPython? It's a version of Python designed to run on tiny computers called microcontrollers. CircuitPython development is primarily sponsored by Adafruit. So if you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython, consider purchasing hardware from adafruit.com. This meeting is hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join anytime by going to adafru.it slash discord. We hold the meeting in the CircuitPython dev text channel and the Capital CircuitPython voice channel. Typically, this meeting happens on Mondays at U.S. Uh, time 2 p.m. Eastern Time and 11 a.m. Pacific Time, except when it coincides with the U.S. holiday. In the notes document, which we'll talk about later, there's a link to a calendar you can view online or add to your favorite calendar app. We will also send no notifications about upcoming meetings via Discord. If you would like to receive these notifications, ask us to add you to the at sign CircuitPythonistas Discord role, and you'll get a ping once a week and before the meeting. Uh, there is a notes document, which is currently a Google doc, shared Google doc document to accompany the meeting and recording. The final notes document includes timestamps to go along with the video, so you use the doc to skip around and view the parts of the meeting that interest you most. The meeting tends to run 45 to 60 minutes. After each meeting, we will post a link for the next meeting's notes document to the CircuitPython dev channel on the Adafruit Discord. Check the pinned messages to find the latest notes doc so you can add your notes for the following meeting. If you wish to participate but cannot attend, you can leave hug reports and status updates in the document for us to read during the meeting. The meeting is held in five parts, community news, the state of CircuitPython, libraries and Blinka, hug reports, status updates, and updates. Reads. Uh, I'll explain each of those as they come around. And um, when we'll get started by doing community news, um, community news comes from the weekly Python or, micro, Python or Microcontrollers newsletter, which goes out by email on Monday mornings. You can go visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe to the newsletter. Thanks to Ann for putting the newsletter together. If you have any Python and hardware projects to share or find content you'd like to see included in the newsletter, please consider contributing. You can open a PR on GitHub. The newsletter is collected. I'll let's explain that. The newsletter is collected weekly uh, in GitHub. Uh, tag at sign ang underscore engineer on, on Twitter with hashtag CircuitPython or email cpnews at adafruit.com with a link to the interesting news. Okay, so first I'll go over what we've got uh, in the upcoming newsletter. The newsletter came out this morning, so uh, you've probably seen, if you get the newsletter, you've seen this already. And for the rest of you, uh, this will be a review of the kind of content you can get. These are kind of the top headline items that are particularly pertinent to CircuitPython. So CircuitPython Day, which comes once a week, is this year is on August 18th. That is a Friday. Uh, not very long from now, in 11 days, and a slate of events is being developed to celebrate the snakiest day of the year. There's a link in the notes document to the blog post, which has the current agenda for things that are happening, and there may be more that will be added. Uh, highlights are Paul Cutler will be hosting a panel about CircuitPython's new SynthIO module. Tim Foamy Guy will be hosting a CircuitPython code jam. Melissa will be hosting a project live stream, and Jeff, Dan, and Katni will be having a CircuitPython chat. So keep track of, uh, of this blog post for updates on specific details and events and when they are. If you'd like to uh, tag something uh, and have it mentioned during CircuitPython Day, uh, tag your projects CircuitPython Day, hashtag CircuitPython Day 2023 on social media, and Adafruit will look for those and highlight them. If you have other events that you'd like folks to attend or have projects in the works, you can email them your thoughts to CircuitPythonDay at Adafruit.com. And we've had, uh, for instance, there one year there was a, um, 
a project day in India, which was on CircuitPython Day. And that's the kind of thing we'd love to highlight. So thanks to everybody for, for contributing to that and uh, attending when it does happen. Uh, next item is about um, that Damien George, the MicroPython lead, was on the Embedded.fm podcast. Uh, Damien George spoke with Embedded.fm about developing with and for MicroPython, while Alicia White tries not to spill all the secrets about her client. I'm not quite sure what that means. Maybe it's another person who's on the same um, podcast. To start at the beginning of the, and understand what's going on, you will probably want to check out micropython.org. Before listening to the show, you might read the Wikipedia MicroPython entry because they kind of start in the middle in the show. So you want to, if you want some background. Uh, next item, and I've been failing to take timestamp, so let's take a timestamp here. There we go. Uh, MicroPython is um, changing their native module naming scheme. It used to be that the native modules all began with the letter U, like UOS and uh, UJSON and so forth. Starting in version 1.21, all built-in modules will have been renamed to match the regular, the CPython name, OS, Sys, JSON, etc. That's what CircuitPython has been doing for a while. The only exception is UC types, which is really not anything like C types. So it will keep the C types names. Also, uasyncio and your requests have been renamed to asyncio and requests. Those are Python libraries, but uh, they're actually part of the sort of the MicroPython code base. There's a lot of existing code that uses the use uses the U prefix, like import, it might say import UOS or import your requests. So those things will continue to work. So they'll, they're basically an, an alias for the old name. But please prefer to use just a new non-U prefix name from now on. And going along with this, the idea also, as has been true in CircuitPython for a while, is that uh, these libraries are the same as or subsets of the CPython um, functionality, mostly. There are a few exceptions, but the idea is that if it can run in MicroPython, uh, then it should be able to run on regular CPython, that's regular desktop Python, usually. Okay, next item. Um, there's an FPGA uh, ICE called ICE40, and uh, there's now a CircuitPython library that lets you program that FPGA. There are details. I will not read all the details here, but um, it, there's a library, a library called Ice Python, and um, it lets you program any Ice 40 FPGA with a simple in by writing some some uh, some Circuit Python code. So read about that in the newsletter, and there's a and there are links to the details in the notes also. And there's an FPGA. There's a feather shaped board that has this F FPGA ICE40 on it for you to see. Okay, as I mentioned, um, all, this, all this material comes from the CircuitPython Weekly Newsletter, also called the Python and Microcontrollers Newsletter, because it's really more than just CircuitPython. So uh, there are links to contribute. Uh, there's a link to the GitHub repository where we collect information each week. And you can also, as we said, uh, tag a tweet on with pound sign with hashtag circuit python on twitter or some other social media site or email cpnews at adafruit.com and we'll pick that stuff up okay our next major section is the state of circuit python the libraries and blinka um, this report contains information from the previous seven days but they uh, it was done last night so any changes that have happened since then are not included in this report um, and somebody did this work for me because I forgot to do it. Uh, thank you, whoever pasted all that in. Overall, there were 32 pull requests merged uh, with 20 authors, um, five reviewers, and there were 13 closed issues by five people and 13 opened by 12 people. So we're running, we have the same number of issues open as closed as open. Okay, um, next up is the core section, and Scott, if you were available to read that, go ahead. Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> it's finding my, finding my windows. 
Okay, so the core, uh, we had 20 pull requests merged from 12 different authors. Thank you to those folks. Uh, Lint Smitka is new. Uh, El Pekinian is relatively new as well. Um, and I think a number of those other folks are translators. So thank you to everybody who's contributed to the core recently. We had three reviewers, Jeff, Dan, and I. Uh, we have 25 open poll requests, which puts us on that single page mark, which is great. Um, and a number of those are pretty new, pretty new, which should make it easy to get through as well. Uh, Issues-wise for the core, we had three closed issues by two people and six opened by six people, so we're net up three. Uh, for a total of 681 open issues. Uh, we prioritize... Uh, Adafruit-funded development using the milestones. Um, so this is to say that if you want to work on something that's marked long-term, you're more than welcome to, and we're happy to assist. Uh, but the milestones tend to be used for uh, the Adafruit-funded development. Um, we have zero open issues for A2X, so Staples looking good. Um, we have 49 issues open for 9.0.0, which is a lot, but we're also not nowhere close to, to releasing 9.0. And then the other interesting uh, thing here, or classification, is that we have three issues not assigned to milestones. We always want to make sure and look at issues and triage them just so that we know if anything urgents come up. And that's the, the stats for the core. Okay, thank you, Scott. Okay, next up is a report on uh, CircuitPython libraries. And Katni, could you read that? Absolutely. This is uh, the section applies to all of the Adafruit CircuitPython libraries and all of the libraries in our community bundle, as well as a few extras. So across all of those repositories, we had 11 pull requests merged from 10 different authors and four different reviewers. And that leaves us with 51 open pull requests. The oldest open pull request at the moment is 433 days, and that is because our very, very, very longest open pull request, which was 1,042 days, has been merged. I'm very excited to see that. Um, not to mention all but four of the 11 were um, 18 days or older, including some that were 100 days plus. So I'm really excited to see that we're getting through that. And thank you very much to uh, Foamy Guy for um, seeing to it that that's happening. Um, as for issues, we had nine closed issues by two people and seven opened by six people, leaving us with 628 open issues. 19 of those are labeled good first issue. Uh, if you're interesting in, in, interested in contributing to CircuitPython on the Python side of things, check out circuitpython.org slash contributing. You'll find all of this information and more, including open pull requests and open issues. If you're interested in reviewing, check out the open pull requests. Feel free to leave a comment with what you find. If you have the hardware, test it. Otherwise, just let us know what you think of the code. And once you are comfortable with that, we can talk about leveling you up to the review team. If you're interested in contributing code or documentation, check out the open issues, find something that interests you, leave a comment, let us know you're working on it. Um, if you're new to Git and GitHub, we have a guide on contributing to CircuitPython using Git and GitHub, and uh, we're always available on Discord to help out. We want to make sure that you can contribute in a way that works for you. In terms of library PyPI download stats this week, we had 164,880 PyPI downloads over 311 libraries, and the top 10 are listed in the notes if you're interested. Uh, library updates in the last seven days. We had four updated libraries and no new libraries. And that's where we are with the libraries. Thank you, Katni. Okay, uh, next up, it's about um, Blinka. Uh, and um, Melissa, if you're available to explain about that. Yep. Um, so Blinka is our CircuitPython compatibility layer for MicroPython, Raspberry Pi, and other single board computers. Uh, this week we had one pull request merged by one author and one reviewer. There are uh, four open pull requests amongst all the repositories. Uh, there's one closed issue by one person and zero opened. Uh, that leaves 100 open issues. Uh, and there were 12,256 PyPI downloads in the last week. 10,214 PyWheels downloads in the last month. And we are at 119 supported boards. Okay, that's it. Thank Go ahead. Um, thank you very much, Melissa. Okay, I wasn't sure if somebody else has something to say. Okay, uh, next up is uh, hug reports. Um, 
What is Hug Reports? It's a chance to highlight folks in the CircuitPython community and beyond for doing awesome things. I'll start and we'll go down the list uh, alphabetically, as in the notes, and to give everybody a chance to participate. If you are text only or missing the meeting, I'll read your notes when I get to them in the list. Um, so I will start. Uh, first of all, uh, let me put a timestamp in here. I managed to reset my timestamp board, so I'll be doing it by hand from now on. Um, thanks to Elpa Cannon for working on several uh, CircuitPython issues over the past few weeks, including uh, several pull requests and bugs and things like that. That was Thanks for working on those things. Very nice. Uh, thanks to Brent and Jeff for a quick update of the expired certificate that Adafruit I.O. depended on. So there was, it was people were having trouble connecting to Adafruit I.O. because there was a certificate that had expired, which Adafruit I.O. depended on. And um, so we updated the list of certificates in CircuitPython. And we also updated, uh, Brent updated uh, the NINA firmware, which the Airlift uh, board chips, Airlift uh, coprocessors use, which are on various boards and also are on breakouts. And also, finally, thanks to Deshipu for noticing that a lot of issues that were marked as good first issue were not really such good issues, good first issues. And he went through them and uh, triaged them. And I also helped, like, clean them up in, co in coordination with him. So that worked out really nicely. OK, uh, next up is C. Grover, and I'll read theirs. Uh, that's a group hug. And next up is uh, DJ Devon 3. Thank you. I just have a hug to Anecdata and LP Kennan for help with ideas and sample NVM code to allow API tokens to persist even after a reset. Thank you. OK. Thanks. And next, I'll read uh, David uh, Glode's um, contribution. Let me get, set a better timestamp here. And he has a group hug. And next up is Foamy Guy. All right. Thanks, Dan. Um, hug reports this week. Uh, thank you to uh, American Melissa, who implemented support for RGB bitmaps inside image load uh, library. That's really cool to see. Uh, as well as pointing me towards some resources to better understand how those different formats work. Um, on Discord, one of the community helpers, uh, Ed Keys, uh, thank you to them for pointing me in the right direction and giving me some guidance on trying to analyze some audio data that I came across, and a group hug for everybody. Thanks. All right, thanks. Uh, next up is Jeff. Hi, I've got a couple of things today. I want to start out with a group hug, because y'all are awesome, and then some specifics. Uh, Kmatch98, thank you for implementing dot clock displays in CircuitPython. I believe that's over a year ago now, and I'm really looking forward to learning from your code. And more about that a little later. And a hug to Tectric for popping up right away on the weekend when I ran into trouble building a CircuitPython library in GitHub Actions. Uh, Tectric had put in a pull request to change some details about how the tests are done, and I had reviewed it, and we both thought this looked perfectly safe, and it had actually broken... Um, building modules that had tests in it. So I guess the the key is to test. Uh, but now it's fixed, so that's great. That's all. OK, thank you, Jeff. OK, next up is Katni. Hello. Uh, this week, I have a hug for Toddbot for helping me get started with Synth.io. Um, I have a little uh, synth board care package on the way that I'm super excited about. Um, to Filmy Guy for going through older PRs, as I mentioned, and merging the oldest open PR. And uh, I will echo Dan with a uh, hug report for Deshipu for cleaning up some of the good first issue um, labels. They were certainly uh, labeled on things that were not good first issues, and we were running into um, discouraging uh, new folks, which is something we obviously want to avoid. And uh, I also appreciate Deshipu for even bringing up the concern in the first place. Um, that was uh, something that he came up with on his own and um, offered to help with, which was excellent. And I also have a group hug. OK, thanks, Katni. And uh, Melissa, you are up next. I wanted to give a hug to Jepler for some helpful suggestions with uh, bitmap tools and also another one for adding the blip function to bitmap tools. 
uh, how to find me guy for uh, talking through some ideas to get the Alpha Blend working better in bitmap tools, and a hug to Foamy Guy and Matland for reviewing my image load PR and a group hug to everyone else. All right. Thank you, Melissa. And Paul Kettler is up next. Thanks, Dan. I have a hug for Jepler, Katni, Toddbot, and JP for all agreeing to be on the SynthIO panel for CircuitPython Day. And a group hug. Okay, thanks. And finally, but not last but not least, is Scott. Go ahead. Thank you, Dan. Uh, hug report to Foamy Guy for adding my d USB host descriptor library to the bundle for me. Uh, hug to Greg Steyer, uh, who used to work for NXP and is still a helpful, helpful person to ask uh, for helping with an IMX RT uh, chip ID question. And then uh, lastly, a hug to DCD for uh, taking time codes during my deep dive last week. Okay, thanks, Scott. Okay. Uh, next up is status updates. So this is our time to tell us what, uh, tell folks what we're working on individually. I'll start and we'll again go through the list in the notes doc. So say what you've been doing since the last meeting and what you'll be doing in the next meeting. Or if you have some interesting things to share, go ahead. Uh, it could also be, it doesn't have to be CircuitPython related if you're working on something else that's interesting. And if a discussion becomes too long, we can always uh, move it to in the weeds, especially if we'd like to have some uh, give and take on a certain topic. All right, I'll start with the time code. Um, so I'm still continuing on the MicroPython v1.19.1 merge. Uh, I did a second pass on all the um, differences and made some edits to that, which I think are going to save time in, in the long run. And then the next thing is to try to build it. And of course, you immediately run into compiler errors. And so I've just been knocking those off one by one. Um, I'm making that's a thing that is sort of satisfying to make progress on. Uh, I do see that there are some major changes that are affecting the code that we wrote for doing uh, long live storage allocation. But that code is sort of, what it does is kind of optional. So I'm actually just going to comment that out for the moment and see if I can get the whole thing to at least uh, compile and then go back and study this issue in more detail and may, and may talk to uh, Scott about it because he wrote that code originally. Uh, in circuitpython.org, I added a more prominent notice in the download of the latest stable version section that for NRF boards, if your bootloader is too old, which is true for a lot of boards, um, you will need to update that bootloader in order to make a 2.0 load because it's bigger than what the old bootloader could load. So that's uh, that we we do keep having people uh, run into this, and it's not so they, they don't necessarily see this problem up front because it's kind of buried in the release notes or it's just in the, was in the blog post. So now it is right there where you download uh, CircuitPython. And as I mentioned, um, I released uh, CircuitPython 8.2.2 a, a week ago, like last Monday evening, with updated certificates for Adafruit I.O. Okay, and that is it. So we'll move on to Steve Grover, and I'll read their contribution. Um, took a break from technology products to comprehensively upgrade workshop storage with overhead shelving, French cleat tool, and cabinet system. That also meant uncovering and completing an overwhelming collection of delayed carpentry and yard art projects. Just started working on a few PCB projects, two are art, quote, art projects, unquote, using at, uh, Ash, Ash Park After Dark Colors. The other is a universal version of the transformerless Class D amplifier output to audio line level circuit known as the reintegrator. The new version will support will sport a 3.5 millimeter TRS style audio jack for the single ended output and two Pico Blade connectors for balanced input and speaker through signals. And next up is DJ Devon 3. I uh, can't hear you. Yeah, another one. It's going to be really loud with my fan on. Sorry. Okay. Uh, uh, I finally found a way to get Fitbit tokens to persist after a hard reset. Um, again, thank you to Anic Data. Uh, using 64 bytes of NVM storage, my first time ever trying to use NVM. 
Uh, and my goal with the at all Adafruit API requests that, that I write is to make them beginner friendly. And adding the token to NVM is an acceptable workaround for persistent storage for the token. There's no need for boot.py and file rights or a server callback, which was one of their required methods. So it's a, it's a really neat workaround um, and can still be considered beginner friendly as long as they don't need to like mess with the NVM, you know, stuff and they just want to mess with the request stuff. Uh, and I submitted a small basic Fitbit API example to the Adafruit request library this week. It will require a reviewer to have a Fitbit device. I don't know if that's like a really bad thing or not, but I mean, there it is. That, that, that's all I got. Okay, thank you. Uh, I don't think it's a bad thing. We have libraries that are quite hardware specific, so I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Uh, next up, I'll read uh, David Gloat's um, contribution. Uh, it was PicoPad week for him. Soldered my PicoPad. It is kind of a Pi Gamer powered by a Pico and comes as a solder kit. It is made in the Czech Republic and all the software is open source. Tested the many built-in games. Tested the CircuitPython firmware and various Hello World and demos. Adopted CP code from Learn Guides for two extensions, PicoPad DS18 by 20 and PicoPad PhotoCell. Ordered another PicoPad and all the available extensions for my niece. After checking with her father, the soldering part would be okay. Upgraded a few boards to 822, entered the, the latest Nina firmware, and or to the new UF2 bootloader. That's the NRF bootloader. Okay. And next up is Foamy Guy. All right. Uh, let's see here. Lost my spot. It scrolled back. There we go. Uh, so um, this past week, I was working on submitting some Oshawa certificate uh, requests into their system. I finished up the remaining items that are on the new items page on the Adafruit store currently. Uh, this week, I am going to work on some scripts to compare a kind of full list of PIDs against whatever's in the Oshawa system to find uh, ones that are still missing and get those knocked out next. Um, I did some testing on the RGB support inside image load. Um, I have been still continuing to make progress through some of the older PRs, knocked out a couple more of those this week, and uh, or last week I should say, and have some more loaded up for the, the desk this week to look at. Um, I am going to look into adding a new section on the infrastructure uh, issues page in circuitpython.org, a section that will find uh, libraries that have release uh, that, are, that are in the state where the most recent release is not the one that is marked latest uh, in github because apparently those are two different concepts i guess i found um one or two in that state recently so it'd be nice to have kind of an early warning check for those somewhere um uh, as uh, noted a little bit earlier for circuit python day i'll be hosting uh, and participating in a circuit python themed uh, game jam so i'll stream some of the work that uh, on the game that i create um that, that weekend, probably. And then uh, anybody else who is interested in participating, I would encourage you to do so. If you do participate and you want to share uh, the game that you make, um, feel free to uh, put the word out and we can showcase that kind of on like a recap stream or something after the uh, the game jam has concluded. If anybody is interested in making something to sharing uh, and sharing it, that'd be great. Um, outside of CircuitPython land, at least for now, I picked up this uh, toy, this LeapFrog smart pause toy uh, that I found on clearance at the store recently. It's a, a thing that allows the parents to customize um, the child's name as well as a couple other things that the toy can then sing about or say. And there's lots of different activities the child can do with it and different buttons in the pause and all this stuff. But the thing that caught my eye is the way that you configure it is through a web application that you can use on a phone or a PC. And there's a three and a half millimeter jack on the toy that plugs in. So it sends data over audio into the toy. And I'm kind of starting to poke around at it and try to reverse engineer and figure out how it's encoding the data it's sending and see if there's any possible way to put uh, customized audio into it beyond what they have pre-programmed. Um, if I don't end up having success with that, I probably will eventually turn to uh, a more surgical approach where I will just implant CircuitPython in place of whatever uh, guts are inside of it today to make it play whatever I want. Um, and that is what I have got going on. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Foamy Guy. Uh, next up is uh, Jeff. 
Hello. So uh, over the last week, I did a lot of miscellaneous as well as Pi Camera. I, uh, like two or three weeks ago, had made some changes to uh, PIO on the special peripheral on the RP2040. This weekend, I got back to testing that, fixed some problems, um, and pronounced it ready. Scott had some very helpful review comments, belated hug report to you, Scott, uh, that I need to address so that we can get that merged in. That enables two new features of the PIO peripheral, which is uh, to load a program at a specific offset, which you might need to do because of reasons, um, and the ability to have a program that uh, contains input pins, but not an in instruction because the instruction is run uh, on a demand-based um, you know, when when the Python code decided, decides it wants to read out a value, it executes an in instruction. And so it just had to bypass or change some error handling um, so that that was possible. And both of these enable um, different ways of reading from uh, quadrature or rotary encoders. Um, as for the Pi camera, you know, I've got this prototype board. It is a cool little board. Um, it is still a ways out from being offered on the Adafruit store, but keep an eye out, out for it because it is a lot of fun. Remember to drink your Ovaltine. Um, let's see. It was let slip that um, I will be on a panel discussion on CircuitPython Day. I wrote here in all likelihood, but I guess it's a done deal. Uh, so next up, I'm going to shift gears for a while, and um, I got some boards from Tindy that have so-called dot clock displays and the ESP32 S3 microcontroller. And I'll have to start by writing CircuitPython board definitions for them. And then I will be studying Kmatch's code to interact with dot clock displays. I have a feeling that uh, I will be starting with a fresh implementation, but starting with that initial kind of knowledge of how to, how to interface with it is gonna be super helpful. Um, and then something else that uh, may or may not happen sometime soon, We've talked internally about making a Doom port to the Pi camera. Uh, it has six buttons, so you might even be able to play it. If you'll recall, sometime maybe over the winter, I did a port to the ESP32 S3 Feather with built-in TFT, and that one would only play the demo, um, play the recorded demos, but this one with the input buttons, we might actually make it playable. So. Just another thing that would be really fun to do. And that's what I've got going on right now. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Jeff. And next up is Katni. Hello. Uh, so my list is quite short. Uh, over the last week, I've been working on the Metro RP2040 guide. It is uh, not yet available in the shop, but it is in the shop. Uh, so sign up if you're interested in getting that board. I'm just looking at the rest of my list. Yeah, that's all I've been working on. Um, Doing the um, pinouts pages in the in the RP2040 guides are uh, very involved because every pin can do a thousand things, and we show not only what the uh, pin uh, pins can do based on name, but we also have a huge list that shows you based on um, feature what which pins fall under each feature. And because this is a new board and exposed way more pins than any other RP2040 we've ever done, there was no copying and pasting to be done. It was all brand new. So there was a lot of data sheet digging, um, a lot of um, getting the uh, pretty pins diagram in order so I could verify what I was finding in the data sheet, and um, a lot of forgetting that I had to translate spy TX and spy RX to MISO and MOSI. Um, so hopefully I didn't miss any of those. Um, and that is, uh, until that is done, that is what I'll be working on. Okay, thanks, Kat D. All right, uh, next up is Maker Melissa. Hello. Uh, last week I was working on code for um, my, a message board guide that I'm working on and uh, learning how to use the bitmap tools in the process. I added the 16, 24, and 32 bitmap support to the image load library. And I'm working on improving the, I worked on improving the alpha blend function in CircuitPython core for better handling darker bitmaps. Um, I'm finishing updating those alpha bit blend improvements uh, this week and looking into adding compression type three support for true color bitmaps for the image load library. 
uh, continue working on the code for the message board and um, finish up my circuit Python PR for the Arduino Nano ESP32. And that's it. Okay, thank you, Melissa. And um, finally, we have uh, Scott. Hello. Okay, so <clears throat> I made libraries for the USB host descriptors, which is an, a very basic library just meant to help understand the descriptor part of USB. And then I also made a mass storage, uh, mass storage library that allows you to mount a USB drive uh, into CircuitPython, which is pretty neat. Um, I need to update TinyUSB today, uh, probably, because TAC added support for uh, port reset. The USB host right now is it's super resilient across reloads because you might be in the middle of a transaction. So hopefully by resetting USB devices across uh, reloads will actually make it uh, more reliable. Uh, I'm going to pair with Dan on the, the MicroPython merge and the IDF 5.1 update. And then um, what I'm actually working on right now is I'm working on adding uh, Blackmagic support for the IMX RT1011. Um, which is, it, it supports the 1060 just fine. And I was like, oh, this is great. And then I moved it over to the 1011 and it didn't work. So um, it's open source. So I'm able to dig in and I think it's a pretty simple fix. And I'm, I'm right to the point where I can determine that that's actually the case. So I'm working on that. And uh, for anybody who in the future makes an ASIC chip, make sure there's a register people can read to know what uh, chip they're actually talking to. Uh, because the IMX RTs don't tell you. Um, the way that even some NXP code does it is they literally just read like part of the ROM code and, and it changes based on like the build that they did. So um, it's a little silly, uh, but I'm, uh, I've got my box of boards in my lap and I'm going to run through and make sure that that works uh, decently well. Okay. That's is that it, Scott? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. So that's it for um, uh, status reports. And the next section is in the weeds, where we have a longer um, uh, discussion of the things that were people proposing or have questions about or just want some input on. So I will let me take a timestamp for what I just said. And uh, Dexter has a uh, something they'd like to talk about. So uh, why don't you just go ahead, if you if you want to talk, have audio, Dexter, go ahead. Do you want to speak or do you want me to read it? Oh, no audio, okay. So I will read, uh, Dex Dex Dexter says, what if we set up a, quote, community project, something everyone could build using in-stock products? It would need a build of bill of materials and instructions. These could be on, GitHub, maybe we could build a useful gadget with a screen and some keyboard switches. So if I understand Dexter, you're saying like the kind of project that is on learn, you would propose that that be uh, done in kind of by several people or by a bunch of people at once and everyone might contribute toward this. Is that what you're, you're interested in, in, in saying? And I'll look for, wait for a text from you. Yeah, Dexter says, let's build something together. So one thing I might say uh, um, is that there's, it's not for shared stuff right now, but every anyone who's registered on as an Adafruit.com user can, uh, there are things called um, user pages or playground pages in which they can write something that looks like a guide page. It's kind of a simplified version of the same content management system that we use to write guides. Now, there's no way to share access to that right now, but the ultimate form of this project could be there rather than uh, in GitHub. Or it could be in GitHub if it wants to be more collaborative, or it could be a Google Doc or something like that. And as David said, yeah, you can make something that is sufficiently interesting can also just be turned into a learn guide. So. Uh, this sounds like an interesting idea. Uh, Dexter, I assume you want to take the ball and, and coordinate this. Um, do you have anything else that you might 
say about this, or would you like to just maybe open a uh, some shared either GitHub or a Google Doc or something and have people start contributing to it? And maybe there could be a separate meeting uh, or just a, an exchange in, in chat after this about what this project might be. And Dexter says, let's talk about it more on CircuitPython Day. That sounds like a very interesting idea. Um, if you'd like to host something, um, we could have a uh, GitHub, I mean, a, a Discord audio or video uh, meetup about that on CircuitPython Day and coordinate it with the times or the, uh, or the other things. And we could create a temporary channel, as David says. Does anybody, think, anybody else have any uh, contributions they'd like to say out loud? All right, I don't hear that, but sounds good. So let's plan on something. It's only in 11 days, so let's plan on, on something. And uh, you, can, you can, as we said, you can write to CircuitPythonDay at, at uh, adafruit.com and um, propose something and we'll find a schedule slot for it and say what your own constraints are about when it could be and what you want the, it, the form of it to be. Okay, great, sounds great. All right. Uh, if nobody else has anything else, if we're in the weeds, I'll do. I'll wrap up the meeting. Let me um, take a timestamp for that. Um, this has been the Circuit Python Weekly for August Monday, August seventh, twenty twenty three. Thank you to everyone who participated. If you want to support Adafruit and Circuit Python, and those of us that work on Circuit Python, consider purchasing things from the Adafruit shop at adafruit.com. The video of this meeting will be released on YouTube at youtube.com slash Adafruit, and the podcast will be available on major podcast services. Uh, the meeting will also be featured in the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. Visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe. Next week, the next meeting will be held next Monday as usual at 2 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time and 11 a.m. U.S. Pacific Time. Um, as we mentioned, this meeting is held in the Adafruit Discord, which you can join by going to adafru.it slash discord. And there's a link there you can click to join the discord. And to be notified about the meeting and any ch changes to the time or day, you can ask to be added to the at sign CircuitPythonistas role on discord. So we'll see everybody next week. Thank you for attending and contributing. And I will stop recording.